Y es que te quiero, Scarlett. You know this would happen? Everything changed. Este es William Hunt, de Missouri. Has estado fuera demasiado tiempo, Alicia. Hay asuntos que se beneficiarían de tu atención. No se puede abandonar a los amigos. Um, no, it's great. I mean, obviously, I, I love Tim's work. I'm a huge fan of his stuff forever. I mean, Edward's one of my favorite films. So I was very pleased that I, he would be a producer on this film because it's very nice to have the man who created the universe at the end of a phone call or an email, so it's very helpful. Um, but at the same time, I knew growing up Alice very well, that she was part of my life. You know, in England, it's a book you have in your house, your parents have it, your grandparents have read it, everyone knows who Alice is. But not only that, you read the books, so you know there are two books for a start. Lots of people don't know there are two books, because often they read the abridged version, which is together. And so I remember reading Looking Glass as a kid and really enjoying it and finding the world fascinating and the whole idea of you know, what's behind the mirror is, is a brilliant, interesting idea. Um, but I also remember laughing at it. I remember thinking that Lewis Carroll was funny. Um, and that's really important to me because obviously my background is largely in filmmaking is, is comedy. And so I felt like I could try and bring both in the design and the tone of the film a slightly more comedic version of that world. Corre. Well, as you can probably imagine, whenever you put Johnny Depp and Sacha Baron Cohen in a room, things tend to get funny. It's good. It's really, I mean, I, I know them anyway, and I know they know each other in the real world, and they're quite competitive, <laughs> naturally, comedically. And so I, can, I, can, I knew that would be a useful energy to have in the scene, because the scene is about them competing, about them not getting on, and about them trying to outwit each other. Uh, and so there's a, that when you have that, you sort of bring the energy to it very, very much. And I love the idea of, we, we obviously, we shot the scene, we got the stuff we needed in terms of the lines, and then I said to them, just do what you want. And that was really fun. And even though, you know, you might not use all of it, there's bits of it you use throughout the whole scene because it creates a great energy. Cuando el día se transforma en noche y el cielo se convierte en mar, el reloj da la campanada. No hay tiempo para el té tomar. <laughs> it's hugely important. It's, for me, it was one of the most important things because it was the first time we went to a really new place uh, in Underland. And it was the first time we were going to visit a place we'd never seen before. Uh, and I thought that one of the most important things to the character, he should be funny, but you should feel sorry for him. I wanted him to be lonely. So he should live in an enormous void of nothingness. And it would be, he'd have nothing for company other than his small robot servants, effectively. And because I wanted him to be able to be taken advantage of by the Red Queen, so he needed to be lonely. Um, and so the design was like, it had to be enormous scale, very cold. Um, and I also like the idea that obviously he lived in a castle in a clock. And one of my favorite things is where you realize as you pull out, you're in this incredibly rocky environment and you come back out and wide, and you suddenly realize that he lives in this castle, which is the center point of a gigantic clock. And so using that imagery was really interesting to me. And also with the design of the castle itself, I, I'm, I love, carriage clocks or clocks you put on mantelpieces and for that one I literally opened the back of the clock and put my head in it and, then, and I looked and I thought this is going to be an amazing location to put something into to jump around and like just to have to get to, to put the middle battery in the middle that Alice has to get from here to here so it's via cogs and pendulums and levers and that stuff I thought was fantastic. Y en mis horas más bajas, antes de mi rima final, Ella volverá al país de las maravillas y las manecillas del tiempo retrocederán. There's a book that's never been made into a film which needs to be made into a film, which is um, uh, A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy O'Toole, which is the greatest comic book probably ever written and written in the 60s in America. And people keep trying to make it, but it's a very hard book to make into a film, I think, because the author just wrote it and then it was, it was published without ever being edited, really. Uh, and so that, I think, would make a fantastic film. At some point, I was... Well, uh, who knows? I may still at some point do that. El tiempo es un hombre? Es alguien que no te conviene como enemigo. Por favor, señor, el sombrerero está en peligro. It would be interesting. I've not heard of that. But yeah, no, sure. I mean, who knows? They are... I mean, the thing about the GM Barry Peter Pan, it's set a bit later. Like, GM Barry... Peter Pan's like 1904 or something. And Alice is 1860. So they're different people, different generations. Alice would be an, a middle-aged woman when Peter Pan was 10. Well, actually, timeless, but yeah. Be, it'd be Alice would be slightly old and Peter Pan would be young, but 
But it's a cool idea. I mean, they both say London. Jovencita, tu tiempo se acabó. Esto no puede ser bueno. Oh, Mary Poppins. That's it. Amazing. <laughs> Alicia. 